I did something that I'm sure we all thought about once upon a time in our journeys. And I decided to just do it. I deleted social media for more than 365 days. And this is the story on why I did this. I was tired of wasting so much time on the platform, feeling lonely, feeling anxious, and just comparing my life to others. I was over it. I didn't want to do it anymore. The feeling of not feeling good enough is probably one of the worst feelings you can feel. It was April 2022 and I made a decision to delete all platforms. If there's one video you watch, this is the one. I'm going to discuss these three key things in this video and I'm telling you, I think it may change your perspective. The first thing is I'm going to talk about what happened leading up to that decision. Why did I make the leap and how I did it? And I'll talk about the journey itself, the ups and downs, the flow, just what the process was and just what happened during that. And what are the key lessons that I learned from that experience? I'll just share, you know, three key lessons. And then we'll talk about the aftermath. Was it worth it? Will I go back to social media? And just what are some of the strategies that you can implement in your journey of mindful social media consumption, as we may call it. But the impact these platforms have on us, on our friends, on our family, on our cultures, on earth and everything in between is not okay. And if we just continue to gain more awareness and, you know, understanding of why and how this is happening, a lot, lots can change. I remember when I used to log into Instagram and I would start scrolling now that I'm able to be aware of what I'm able to understand what I was feeling and I was feeling so much sadness and loneliness and I was stuck in the comparison game of comparing myself to that family or comparing myself to those that relationship comparing myself to that person who started that business and who's making that much money and I was comparing myself to everything even if I wasn't doing it consciously I was doing it subconsciously it's like oh why don't I have that why don't I can't why can't I do this and you'll see why in the lessons but it's dangerous dangerous game to get involved into of that comparison game as someone who's chose a different lifestyle in terms of being a you know social entrepreneur and just choosing a lifestyle of self-development when you do that type of lifestyle it's all inward right and when you're looking at all these platforms it's it's all material it's all outward and that's not where happiness lies. Anyways, it was exhausting and let's just dive into it. Part one, how did I make the leap and why I did it? So in my early twenties, I struggled a lot with mental health, addiction, sadness. And I was just, I was in the state of who am I? Why am I, why am I on earth? And it's a similar journey that most of us go through when we have all these questions, right? We start to search for meaning. Some of us come across self-development books, some of us come across faith, spirituality, religion. Some of us get deep into cultures. Some of us get deep into work and we just search for meaning outward and we just do that. And I feel like this is where I was at in my 20s. And I came to a point where I realized that I struggled a lot with addiction and I was addicted in my teenage years to like weed, alcohol, sex. And even in my early 20s, I was still addicted to all this stuff. And when I realized that addiction was something from, you know, my genetic codes and it was something that was <laughs> easy for me to latch onto and to get addicted to things. So I made a conscious decision to stop with anything that had addicting properties so I had deep stimulants and things that were just not good for the body the mind the soul so when I made that decision I started eliminating a lot of things and habits and behaviors and just started to uplift myself and this is where I came across a few articles and this was later in my 20s when I came across the social media stuff and this was a documentary you may have heard of and came out in 2018 called the social dilemma Social Dilemma opened my eyes to a whole new world of addiction warfare that these platforms have on our psychology and our mind. It blew me apart. I was 
in shock, I was in rage, and I, there was so much emotions and feelings that was going through me, knowing that I'm experiencing it, knowing that my family is experiencing it, my friends are experiencing it, and really, almost everybody around us is experiencing this. And it was so close to my heart because it's like, wow, like I've been spending eight plus years healing and all self-development and reading all these books and just trying my hardest. 15 out of the 30 days, I was happy and I was in good mood, but the other 15 I was, eh, and I was still sad and, and depleted. All to realize that social media was playing a massive part in that and I had no idea because I don't know, I just didn't, right? It's, it's the awareness aspect, right? Like once we know, we know. But if we don't know, we just don't know. And that's a big reason why I'm making this video. So this is where the journey started now. So it's about 2018. It's about a 12 to 24 month journey where it's like, okay, this is what social media is, okay. So I started to be a bit more mindful where it's like, okay, not follow these accounts, only be on for 30 minutes a day. Like just adding these, these strategies that I've been reading about, came across this book. The book was called Hooked. It was about how the, it's a, more of a business book, but it's how, the, how these platforms use psychology and how they keep you on the app. Once I read that book, it was, it was like the coffin for all platforms for me. It was understanding that Facebook and all these platforms are now using science and, and hiring these Harvard experts and all these experts around the world on like, okay, how do we keep people on this app? How do we drain all their dopamine? How do we keep them from not going anywhere and just scrolling? When that hit me, that people are studying this to use that as an advantage against human beings, I was in absolute shock. And because of my lack of awareness at the time and my lack of information and knowledge and how to express this and share this with people, I shut down and I went to a hole and I just allowed mental health to take me over and I guess let the platforms win. And that was the beginning of this journey. Social media grabs us and kind of puts us in this comparison loop where we just keep comparing ourselves to others. And then we have the FOMO, right? The fear of missing out, which is a, it's a, a human bias. And it's just, we don't, we want to be involved. We want to see and all this type of stuff, right? So you add the FOMO and then you add the comparison loop where you're just comparing yourself to everything and any, anybody. There's one quote really stuck with me. It's, do not compare your chapter two to somebody's chapter 20. And that always stuck with me. And it's such a powerful quote. And it's important that you are aware of that quote. Never compare yourself, never. There's no reason to compare yourself, right? Because what we see out there, we only see the good stuff. We only see the surface level material stuff. Like we don't see what's going on inward, right? You may see that person who has millions of dollars in those, all those cards. But if you were to meet that person, and ask them, hey, are you happy? Hey, what's going on inside? Are you healthy? The chances are very high that it's no, because they put so much focus on that one thing. And again, that's all assumption at this point, but it's just important never to compare, never, because it doesn't bring any value. Another key thing before we move on to the second um, section, just on why I decided to make this leap, is I don't know about you, but the media, like TV, I don't watch that. I don't watch the news. It's been a long time. I made that exact decision and I'm very keen on that. I think it's a platform that has a narrative and pushes a certain thing. And when you follow the money trail, you, f you see that these big corporations like Vanguard and Blackguard, like they own all the media stations. So when they own all the media stations, like they have their own narrative, right? They're going to push their own beliefs and all that. And I just like to think more freely on what we want and how we feel. And anyways, so, I, I don't watch the news at all. You know, do what you want to do. Of course, I will not do it. If it goes on, I will go in a, another room. I will not be around the news because I do strongly believe that our subconscious mind is who we are. And if we allow these outside forces to program our subconscious mind, then who are we, right? We are who they want us to be. So I step away from the news. But it's interesting, right? Because I used to do that in my early, like my early 20s, right? Judge, judge, judge. And this whole time I was on social media. And what's interesting is social media, media, right? So it's still media. It's a different type of media. It's more for younger generations. Of course, all generations are on social media, but it is now a news, a new type of news outlet for millennials and Gen Z's and other generations. It's our type of media. It's our type of news. 
So we can never judge anybody if we are on social media because we are doing the exact same thing. It's just a different way of consumption. Yes, there's a bit more freedom and yes, there's a bit more control. Of course, we can decide who we follow and decide who we do not follow. But regardless, we are programming our subconscious mind. And yeah, it's very interesting. So what did I do? I said, hey, I do everything extreme. I'm just extreme like that. Let's do 12 months. Let's quit everything for 12 months. Let's go completely dry. And just to see everything I've read, all the awareness I now have, is it true? How will I feel afterwards? Like I just, I had all these questions and the best way to, to know something is by doing it, right? Like there's no better person to do it than yourself. No one knows you more than yourself. So I said, it's game time. I'm quitting everything, 12 months. I timed it where I was leaving. So I went, I decided to go traveling for nine months, backpacking solo. And this is where I was like, great time delete everything before I go. And I was in the middle. I was like, oh, maybe I won't delete it. Maybe I will. And I, I, it was a nine month trip. And I went to Southeast Asia. So I went to Bali for five, six months. And I went to Nepal for a few months. And it's interesting because I brought my phone, still had social media a little bit. I like, I haven't been all active on it. And the first day I got there, you know, I was like, oh, like post a story. Oh, oh like let's show off. Let's share. Like, look what I'm doing. Look what I'm doing. I kept asking myself, like self-reflect, like, why am I doing this? Why? Like, why do you want to do this? Why do you want to show off? Do this for you, not for anybody else. Don't do it for the gram. And I think I posted one picture. The couple, it was like a weekend, I posted a picture. And I posted it. And it's interesting. As soon as I posted it, after a couple hours, I deleted the entire platform. I kept the picture there, but I deleted it. I deleted the platform. I was like, I don't even care who likes it, who comments. Like, no, why did I do this? But I deleted it and ever since then my life changed and that's what we're going to get into next. So when I got to Bali, I said, hey, this is the most spiritual island in the world. This is the time to practice what I want to practice. So I practiced mastering the art of boredom. I felt there was this thing with boredom that all humans have inside of us. And when I say boredom, I mean just by being still, by being with our thoughts and not doing anything and being okay with that. And I feel like society school, the media, social media, anything around us has programmed us to not be bored. To, oh, you don't have to be bored, watch this, do this, be entertained by this, sports, everything on TV, right? Like, just be this person that is never within your own thoughts. And I was that person for such a long time. I was so reactive and I just did everything and anything that kept my mind busy. And it's not our fault. We are programmed in that. We are born in the materialistic world, very capitalistic world. And that's just what happens. So that journey in Asia, when I just took out everything, it took three months. The first three months were the hardest times of my life. I'd lay in bed contemplating all my decisions on why am I doing that? Just be part of the world, be part of what everyone is doing, all that nonsense. And just, I'm so grateful I pushed through. I chose Bali because, you know, there's two scenes. Of course, you can go after the drinking scene, but there's a very spiritual scene where mindfulness and ceremonies and all these deep things where you can do solo. You don't need to meet people. You don't need to do anything. And that's why I went there and I just didn't meet anybody. And I was just in my own zone for five months, four months ish. And did so many ceremonies and so many plant experiences and meditations and just deep, deep work right to the root, just heal that root. And it was freaking powerful. I'm so grateful I experienced that. I then went to Nepal, did 30 days in a monastery, 15 days trekking Everest base camp, not the top, just the base camp. But that whole experience was done without a phone, without social media, without connections with friends. Once in a while, I connect with family just to let them know I'm safe. But that whole journey allowed me to go deep within myself, to experience all the lessons, all the whys, why Am I addicted to my phone? Why social media? Why, why, why? Like for Chris. So after the nine months, I came back to Canada and this is where I had no more FOMO. I had no more comparison. I didn't really mind or care what other people were doing because I was so happy because I spent that whole journey focusing on myself. And it was like a little self love Chris thing. It was like, I spent my entire life focusing on everybody outside of me on friends, family, 
jobs, school. I just spent my entire life on the outward journey. And this was nine months of inward. It's all about me. And I'm so grateful I did that because now I came back. I came back with three massive lessons and I'm so excited to share them with you. So the first lesson was the inward outward journey. In this video, I've brought that up a few times, the inward and outward. It's so powerful to realize that once we heal the inward, once we focus on what's inside of us in terms of our soul, our spirit, our mind, our mind and our body and just like everything that our thoughts are in our deep, deep thoughts, our deep want, like what does our heart want? Once you start looking at the inward and you start healing what's inside and you start removing all the years of us suppressing the emotions and suppressing our family traumas and suppressing everything, when we heal inward, we let it all out. It takes time. We cry, we experience, we feel, but we let it out. And once we let it out, you can start here, your spirit, your soul, your intuition, whatever you want to call it. There's so many words for it, but you can start to hear your heart. You can start hearing yourself. And once you heal the inward, your outward starts to heal itself because now it's all about what you're seeing, right? Nothing's good or bad. It's our thoughts that make it good or bad. Of course, killing, right? Like all that stuff, of course, it's very bad. But I'm saying just in the general of suffering and happiness and mad and angry, it's our thoughts, right? So once the inward is, the inward is healed, the mind is healed, everything on the outside is absolutely beautiful, abundant, chilling, amazing. And that was the first lesson is with social media, we're prone to look at other people's journeys in life. Subconsciously, we are comparing and we're trying to find our purpose, our passion, our job, our wants, our needs, our relationships, our love. We're trying to find everything outside on this platform, scrolling, hoping to find that next quote, hoping to find that next video that's going to give us the answer. The answer is not there. It's not anywhere out there, nowhere. The answer is inside. It's always been inside. And that's why we need to connect with our inside. But to connect with our inside, we need to remove all the distractions or most of the distractions, or at least be mindful of the distractions. And when I removed the social media and I removed all the distractions, I went somewhere and it was strictly me. I started to realize what I wanted, what my heart wanted, what my soul wanted. And this brought me to here today. So focus on the inward, the outward will heal itself. You'll find yourself, you'll find your purpose, you'll find everything, but it's all inside. There's nowhere to look. <laughs> the, your entire journey, your entire life, it's always been here. It's not gone anywhere. It's not going to go anywhere. Once you start looking inward, you will find it. I'm telling you. So that was the first lesson. I know I got dragged on there. Got really passionate there. Okay, number two, social media is a relationship killer. And this is something I'm very passionate about here. I've had five or six relationships during the social media journey from the beginning to now. It's a good thing that they ended, of course, but I will claim 70 to 80% of it is because of social media, which is good because it just it sped up the process of ending the relationships. And I'm grateful it did because now it brought me to my fiance now with Sarah, which I'm so grateful for. And the reason why Sarah and I have worked out the last five years is because of my mindful consumption with social media. I strongly believe it was a mental shift in my mind. And the mental shift in my mind is I made a lot of friends growing up in high school and all this stuff. And you accumulate all these friends and these friends and you also accumulate all these girls. And because I'm attracted to girls and women, that's, I had hundreds of them on my profile, right? And you'd see them and uh, some of them were in bikinis, some of them were doing this and some of them were doing that. And you know, like, oh my God, there's so many girls out there. And you post a picture and there's 150 girls that like your picture. And it's like, whoa, cool. Like so many people like me, so much ignorance and ego. But anyways, um, so I'm like, oh, everyone like so much love, right? So much people like me. It's so cool. So if a relationship would go wrong and it's like an argument or something, it's like, oh, I don't like that. Like what that person's doing. In my subconscious mind, in my deep level, it's like, don't worry, there's 150 girls that like your pictures all the time. And there's dating apps and there's all these things in, out, outside of us that can give us what we want right now. And you see this bikini picture, it's like, oh, she looks like that. Why doesn't my girlfriend look like that? Like what? 
that's a thing. People think like that, right? And again, I wasn't cautiously thinking about that. Like I wasn't like breaking up with a girlfriend because like it, I wasn't in that depth of level, but subconsciously that was there, right? Like, and most of us deal with that and subconsciously, right? Like some of us are not conscious, but it is. As soon as an argument happens, like of course you're not thinking, oh, that girl liked my picture, but an argument happens like, oh, it's okay. Shit's easy back there. It's okay. There's so much fish in the sea, the classic saying, right? Which yes, there is so much fish in the sea. And yes, of course, if you're in a relationship that is abusive mentally or physically and there's cheating, like, of course, like no, and it relationship ends. But aside from that, deal with what's in front of you. Be with that person, love that person, be compassionate for that person. Don't jump to the easy solution of all oh, there's other people out there, of course, but everybody has their own thing. No one's freaking perfect. So anyways, a big thing that I realized with social media is it made things seem so easy. It made, it made it seem like there's so many girls, so many options, so many this, so many that and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, so I just think it's a relationship killer. I don't think there's anything benefit of it. And the other thing too is the subconscious mind, right? So even if we're not consciously scrolling, we're subconsciously scrolling. We're seeing, oh, Blue Jay, love Blue Jays. Anyways, um, subconscious mind, we're programming it. And as a guy or as a girl, you see these cars and you see these people with all these businesses, all this money, right? You're programming your subconscious day in and day out. I want that, I need that, I want that, I need that. And the effect that has on someone's mind is so powerful and so dangerous. And this is why I believe everybody is lost because we see all these possibilities and all these options. And because we see it all, we think that we can have it or that we want it. But again, don't compare your chapter two to somebody's chapter 20, right? So we keep trying to find the answers on a platform or somewhere subconsciously, we try to find our answers with somebody else's life that is also trying to find their own answers that is also comparing to thousands of other people. So no wonder we're all so confused and lost and sad because it's just a, a repetitive cycle of people trying to find answers through people that are trying to find their own answers that are all surface level materialistic. And it's just dangerous. <laughs> Again, that's why inward is the most powerful thing you can do. So if you want a good relationship, delete the platforms. That's my answer. When people say, oh, my relationships aren't working out. I'll ask, are you on social media? If you're on social media, then that's the first solution. <laughs> Delete it. Because if I can look back at my five, six failed relationships and look back at the one that's working, the one correlation is social media. Of course I've healed and of course I've gotten stronger and better and emotionally stable and all that stuff. But why did I get all that? Because of that. Now the third thing, delaying gratification. So in the digital age, we're able to click any button and receive anything we want. Dating apps, have a girl over tomorrow or have a date sometime next week. Food apps, able to order food, get food at the door within an hour. Amazon Prime, cool, within 24 hours, get anything you want. It's just, it's created this generation in this life of we can get anything we want right away. Social media, you wanna be happy, cool, go on some profile that talks about traveling and trips and see all this and boom, short-term dopamine within five minutes, boom, 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 happy, and then obviously within a minute you're not happy again. But we keep scrolling and the reason we keep scrolling because we're happy for 10 seconds, oh, next another 10 seconds, another happiness, and we just keep getting these hits of happiness, happiness, happiness. That trains our mind to not be able to delay gratification. Well, I've read a lot of books by now and I've studied a lot of wealthy people and happy people and even in my own life, I've noticed that happiness, wealth, freedom, it all comes by delaying gratification, by doing the hard stuff, taking years and years and years to develop an expertise, to be an expert in a space, to develop a skill, a, like something of a business, a relationship, anything. You need to delay the gratification. It's not gonna be great at the beginning. It ain't gonna be all jolly at the beginning. Of course, relationships have that honeymoon phase, but I'm talking about everything outside like work, um, becoming an expert, learning a new skill. It takes time. If you can delay it for five, 10 years, right? The 10,000 hours thing, if you can delay for 10,000 hours, that is where you will receive the gratification. But we can no longer do that. And I feel like that's another reason why we're always so lost because we can't delay gratification and we want it now right away. And when I deleted social media and got rid of all that, I realized that I was able to get stronger in delaying gratification and it allowed me to now pursue this um, career, this job, 
this big mission that I have, this 10 year thing where I want to develop this nonprofit and an animal sanctuary and healing center, but it allowed me to like, okay, like that's so far away, but right now I can lay one brick a day because it's okay. And I can just do the little things and not care about likes, comments, followers, subscribers, like none of that. It's just, I'm doing it for a bigger reason, a bigger purpose. But that helped me by doing a full reset. And I think it's a very powerful thing to understand by delaying gratification. So the aftermath, was it worth it? Would I do it again? What are some strategies if you want to do it? It's a simple answer. It was 110% worth it. It was the single greatest thing I've ever done in my life. And I've done a lot of crazy things. And now it's brought me here today. I now have 30 good days out of 30 days. And I realize I've done a lot of other things and a lot of other habits and behaviors I've changed. But I've realized that happiness is a lot stronger. And when I do have sad or poor or low days, I realize that my mindset is now shifted around focusing on what is the lesson or the growth I can get from that day. And by just doing that, it turns it into a positive day because I'm getting a lesson from that low energy day. But again, that's a massive mindset shift. And I think it can be very powerful to apply to everybody. So when I got back um, to Canada, I actually didn't go on social media. I actually spent um, another nine months, I think nine or 10 months afterwards. It was a full 18 months of no social media, right? And I came back and everything was kind of just more in a still flow energy. My mindset was just chill. Everything was just good. And it was just like, great. Like there's no reason to go back to it. I don't, there's no FOMO, there's no nothing. Like I'm creating that what I want to create. So time passed by and I eventually decided to adapt a creator mindset, not a consumer mindset. So this is where I'm at right now. I'm strictly just creating content and I'm creating from the heart, from the soul. I'm just creating what I feel I want to create to also get stronger and better at other skills like communicating and being in front of camera. I'm very shy. I'm not a camera person. I have no confidence. I had no confidence. Now I have, I'm growing that confidence. And by doing this type of stuff, it's helping a lot. And it's helping with communicating. I used to be a very bad communicator. So these are all tools that by being a creator, I can get better at. And the other thing is I really want to help other people. Like I've noticed in my journey, like it's all about me, 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 self, 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 for like 10 years, self, like I need to heal me, of course, right? But now I'm at the point where now I want to give back. I want to help heal others. Of course, you can't heal anybody but yourself. But what you can do is you can create that vessel for others to heal. And that's kind of what I want to do. I want to create that vessel for other people can start their healing journey or get tips or tricks and all that kind of stuff. So that's where I am now. And some quick tips if you want to start a mindful social media detox or completely delete it. If you want my opinion, I recommend you highly. You delete everything, of course. That's just my extreme opinion. Delete it for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, whatever you can do. If you can do a full year, amazing. I think the biggest um, growth is when you hit the 90 day mark, the three months. I know I, that was my, that's where I got 80% of the growth without that three month mark for me, different for everybody. And I feel like you would never go back. That's one big tip. Second tip, if you want to be a creator, not a consumer, I think that's very powerful too. By just creating from your heart and creating from you and not consuming anything, that could be an also a really good strategy because now, yeah, you're not consuming anything. You're just creating. You're having fun. You're being free. You're expressing yourself. You're being you, your authentic self. It takes time because over the years, you become more and more authentic, more and more real. That could be very powerful too. And if you want to, or if you, not if you want to, but if you can't delete social media and that's understandable, then just follow three to five accounts. Like, like right now, what I do is, like I said, I'm a creator, not consumer, but I have these three accounts that I favorite. And those are the only accounts that I follow. I don't want to use the word consume because I don't consume their words or what they're saying. I'm consuming their art how they're doing the video editing, how they're doing their videos and just how they're doing their art and expressing themselves and telling their story. It inspires me to tell my story in certain ways and it gives me inspiration. So if you can find three to five accounts, I wouldn't do more than five that are very inspiring and motivating that actually give you energy that make you stop scrolling, right? Accounts like you see a video, like cool, you stop and you like, you start your day. Those are the only accounts I'd recommend. I wouldn't recommend more than five. And those are just accounts that will help you, you know, move forward to do and to create and to build what you want to build, right? Like, for example, if you go onto my profile and there's a video that, okay, cool, like, I like it, you stop and you start your day, then that's good, then you follow me. But if there's stuff on my account that makes you feel 
a feeling that is negative or a feeling that is not uplifting or something like you're comparing, then dude, I don't even want you to follow me, right? Like I want you to really take control of you and your life. And social media is not bad. When I say that is the people that created the apps, I think they're not, they're doing it for the money. And I think the narrative is bad. I think that's bad, but it's the way we consume it. We are in control, right? So if you just can, if you're just very mindful and you're very aware and you limit yourself to five minutes a day, three, app, three followers only, and like you do very mindful, then it could be a very good thing because it could be uplifting, right? Social media can help you create a business. It can help you build a community of like-minded people and a tribe that just connects with you and that aligns with you. And I think that is also very beautiful. So there's a lot of, there's, I think there's three pros, right? I think there's the creating your community, your tribe, and there's building a business. And I think there's this finding that motivation, inspiration that when we're really low and we need it, we have it. So I wouldn't push it more than those three things. I wouldn't. I guess, yeah, and expressing your art, expressing yourself, expressing your art. I think that's really cool too. I know I got carried away there. I got a little passionate. I shared a lot of different things. I hope it made sense. I'm trying these new videos where I'm just talking from the heart and just letting it flow. And I'm trying to keep them under 10 minutes, but I just keep talking so they go longer. <laughs> Sending you some good love, some peace. And if there's a couple things you can do after this is yeah, just do a self-reflection in your journal of what is social media to you. Second thing is, if you haven't watched Social Dilemma, watch Social Dilemma, it's so deep, a lot of stats, a lot of stuff you can get from it. And the second thing is, if you like business and you understand the psychology of why these apps are the way they are, the book called Hooked, um, those are all good tools I would use just to gain more awareness of how this platform has control over our minds and what you can do to take back control of your mind. Anyways, you're beautiful. Peace.